I'm going to call this out before anybody else does. You notice this shift in the intro video? That one? <laughs> Reminds me of the bus guy. He's like doing an airport shuttle routine and he's just got the smoothest shift. Very sensual, I'll say. This video is going to go over three things. The brake master cylinder upgrade, the brake lines in the engine bay, as well as the brake booster hose replacement. Now I'm going to put off the stop tech insulation until another video. I'm going to call it 7B. Um, but the 7A will cover those three things. Really great um, project to get into if you're going to upgrade your brakes. Or even if you want to keep the stock brakes, this brake master cylinder is upgrade is amazing. Amazing for pedal feel. Uh, really just a firmer pedal feel, a little bit more initial bite, which these cars can feel a little bit spongy or soft on initial pedal feel. So here's a bunch of that work. It's out. Look at it. Brake buster cylinder, brake booster, brake fluid everywhere. It's quite the challenge to get this thing out of here. Definitely um, heard a bit of finagling uh, just to get it out of this compartment here. Uh, this is just off to the side. Most of the fluid is drained out of there. Hopefully it doesn't continue to leak, but there's a piece here you got to remove uh, to get this to kind of wiggle out. And then you got all the brake lines as well. Um, they're just in the way. So it's kind of this like angle scraping, twisting thing going on <laughs> trying to get it out. So no doubt it'll be a challenge to get the uh, new one back in. Not looking forward to that, um, but just two bolts on the inside underneath the pedals to get it out. No big deal. Here you go. A rare look inside the brake booster, brake master cylinder compartment in an E39. Now one thing that's kind of unfortunate with these cars is this little hole right here will get clogged. And I think it's it's mostly if your car sits outside and debris or whatever just clogs it over time, then water will fill up and it actually will freeze um, the fluid or the brake booster somehow. Again, I'm not familiar, but that causes a lot of problems for a lot of people. But it's also a good way to check to see if your car was parked outside a lot or whether it was in a garage. But nonetheless, a rare look inside this compartment. And to expand upon that, I really like the compartmentalization. You don't see this in a lot of cars where things are separated from the main engine bay. For one, heat is huge, right? You want to keep uh, the brake fluid away from heat. And this sheet metal definitely helps in that regard. It just helps keep dust and dirt and everything out of there as well. Um, this is relatively spotless considering it's 20 years old. I mean, this right here is like, you know, original dirt. So well 20 years worth of dirt yeah it's original 20 years worth now before i can tighten that hose up that single ear hose clamp on that brake booster hose i need to get the brake booster brake master cylinder assembly going so hat tip to e39 m5 restorations on youtube he recommended this master cylinder y'all remind me is it the e 65 brake master cylinder out of the bangle butt 7 series car this is the one that came off the car nothing wrong with it but this one has a little bit larger cylinder so you get a little bit better brake feel out of this car putting this one into the e39 but you can see possibly the problem look at the mounting much more substantial on this side uh than the e39 one so i want to make a little template off of this hole here and basically mark it here just so I can uh, shave this down. It's, it's mainly the top one you need to do because the other uh, reservoir sits on top here and it'll interfere with this. Otherwise you can leave this one, but this one needs to be shaved down a little bit just to match this. Oh, the only other thing that uh, is going on here, I don't know if I'll catalog this or not, but we've got um, an adapter. It's an M10 to M12, so this will go here so that we get the proper proper threading. So when I bought this uh, brake booster, it shipped directly from Germany, from TRW. And it said it came with this gasket. Guess what? It did not. So I had to wait until I found the gasket. Okay. 
How'd I do? <laughs> Pretty sure this gasket was like sitting in a corner somewhere for 20 years. Let's see if he has any of adhesion left to it. Shaving down this upper mount port part, the uh, flange here, is actually not necessary. I think you may have to shave it down a little bit to clear the upper, the reservoir, the brake reservoir, but it was not needed, especially how far I kind of went with this. So definitely check the fitment to see. New brake booster assembly is assembled. A couple notes. Um, well, I've already talked about it, but I'll say it again. This is the E65 brake master cylinder. It's got a little bit larger piston so you get a better brake feel. That's the reason for doing all this. I went ahead and got a new one of these. Uh, pulling this one out was putting some stress fractures in the plastic. And it's kind of started to yellow, which makes it hard to see the fluid level in here. So putting a new one on is nice for that reason. One thing I noticed, this is for the clutch. You can kind of tell, like must have been at the factory, they cut this off with like a razor blade. Same, um, sorry, the observation was that this is sealed off. So you have to cut this and then put your tube on. I was a little nervous. They sent me an automatic one, but these are generic. You just cut it off for manual application. Same thing kind of down here. Uh, this one looks like it was actually kind of snipped off with some snips, but same deal. You gotta cut this off. This one will stay sealed. I wonder what that means if you got two for the clutch. Maybe it's just different sides where the hose is coming in for different applications. So another note is you gotta go um, this is an M12, so it's an M12 to an M10 adapter. Uh, I was a little worried just because of the internal bore of this. It looked pretty small, but I measured the brake lines on the car, and it's about three millimeters, and this is about three millimeters. All oh, the internal bore is like almost five. Um, I don't know. I was a little nervous about that, but I put a little bit of um, Loctite on there. I didn't really didn't like how this threaded in either, um, but. I think we're good. I don't want to over stress or think about that. Other than that, that's it. I mean, this is just a side by side of brand new versus old. I put a new booster in just cause no problems before, but while you're in there. Voila. So the only hard part about that was just finagling these lines a little, around a little bit. Once you can kind of move these so they're not catching the lip of the, uh, the booster, it'll just kind of snakes right in. So now we go into the car, attach the booster to the firewall with these two nuts, and you'll put the pin through that whatever that little uh, eye hook is. There's a little bit of assembly grease on here. I'm going to clean this off and put on some new uh, grease. It's in. Almost. Actually, that uh, brass fitting I had, the adapter, doesn't fit. It's not the right part, so new part is on order. Story of my life, gotta wait. I don't know, I think it's like up to a week wait for that part. Um, what was hard about putting this in? So don't attach this yet, like I had, to the master cylinder. Leave it loose, because attaching these, um, if I can get a shot for you. See that one down in there? That one was like near impossible. Um, and the one on the other side is hard too. Uh, with this in the way, you just can't do it. So just don't attach it yet. Uh, I don't know, you can't see it. This guy down there. Um, so you're gonna want to run those lines into the master cylinder first. Get them all tightened down. And then this little line right here, this rubber hose, uh, goes to the bottom of the reservoir. So you're gonna connect that as well. But then at that point, you need to finagle this hard line um, to the front of the master cylinder because it kind of is oriented a certain way. So you got to kind of get the combo right before you tighten it all down. Uh, this isn't too bad. It goes with the clutch. Um, takes a little bit of force to pull that on and off. But other than that, it's in. Just got to wait on uh, my adapter. We'll be good to go. Um, that wasn't too bad either. Brake booster hose just takes a little bit of lube in there and quite a bit of um, force to pop it in, but it, it'll go in. Alright, my new brass fitting came in. I originally bought this one. 
um, from advanced auto parts but the problem is is this face was the wrong face it's protruding out it's convex um, I needed the opposite I needed a concave surface which is this one this is an Edelman part off Amazon and yeah it's it's really the very similar design this you know uh, it's a little bit longer so I'm gonna blue loctite it and snatch this on there Alright, so I'm going to try to bench bleed this sucker. So we got four lines coming out of here. Three of them, these three right here, are coming out of the master cylinder itself. And then there's another one, it's like a return line for the DSC. So, let's see, this one is the DSC pump. So that's the, uh, that's the fluid that comes into the DSC pump. That is that little thing right here. So that's your stability control. So these two right here, they're actually a bit larger lines. Um, those go to the ABS unit. So I'm gonna do this first, meaning uh, these two fittings right here I'm gonna crack and I'm gonna hook my hose up to these, up to this, this fitting here. This, what is it, female to female little connector. So I'll have the two hoses coming from here to there. And then you could argue I could crack this one to the DSC um, and then just go ahead and bleed that too, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet. Um, probably a good idea. It's just annoying that I only have two um, of these guys. Uh, the kit only comes with two. So let's go. All right, we got it hooked up. I feel like I'm doing some kind of dialysis straight up surgery in here so those two lines I talked about going to the ABS pump are now in here so I'm gonna fill this up and then give it some little pumps of the brake pedal and hopefully just start seeing um, obviously see some bubbles and then we'll see some clear brake fluid with no bubbles that's the goal it's full really full Checking for leaks, no leaks. Let's keep going. Let's make sure that is full. So I did maybe like 20 of these little strokes. And then as the fluid starts to prime through the system, you can just start going a little bit longer and it'll start drawing through here. It's just like skipping over the, uh, the air that's in the system. So ideally, keep doing this until there's just fluid in the hoses, no water. I mean, no, yeah, no water either, no air. <laughs> this really is looking like an OR, man. Look at this, it's like, it's like I'm taping down an IV. Looking a lot better. Still see a little bit of uh, some micro bubbles, but I'm getting full strokes of the brake pedal. So once you work up to that, you'll see the air coming back in. The air is coming in, and the air bubbles release in here. Therefore, you know, ideally there's no air bubbles in the master. So we're getting that air out of the master. So I got the other line, which is this one right here, going to the the DSC stability control module. So I swapped it from the ABS uh, to the DSC. Uh, I was still getting a little bit of bubbles going to the ABS, but I think I'm going to be able to flush that out when I do the rest of the system. Anyway, I wanted to make sure uh, we're clearing out the other side of this brake master cylinder because that part goes directly from a hard fitting on the BMC to the DSC pump. Check it out. Let me know if you see any bubbles. See a couple. Now that everything is back together, all the lines 
So I sprayed a bunch of water down there just to kind of clean off every uh, bit of brake cleaner that spilled, brake fluid that spilled. Yeah, because the headers are right down there, so you don't want that on anything hot because it's flammable. This is gonna be a difficult one. So the brake booster hose is right here. It's like this Y-shaped hose. It's also connected to this side. I can't really see, but anyway, there's this single ear uh, hose clamp that I got off. But now getting this hose off is gonna be difficult. It is hard as a rock. I started prying on this, but it's, it's so brittle, it's like just coming apart. Um, I'm gonna probably hit some WD-40 or something on this to maybe loosen it up. I also saw you could put heat on it, <coughs> but it's kind of hard to get in there. I got fuel lines running everywhere. I don't know. It's kind of need to be careful <laughs> with whatever I do. But the main reason you want to replace this is this little piece back here. I see it's broken. See that yellow, brown plastic piece. So this is known to break. Um, so this is the hose that runs to the brake booster and I just uh, grabbed this hose right here and just like just barely uh, moved it and it, it broke off. You see the other side's broken off in there. Anyway, some people will replace that with a metal piece, but I decided to go ahead and just replace the whole thing. Um, I think replacing that is pretty tough two with like a metal piece so I don't know just kind of bailed and said this shit you know, it's gonna last 20 something years a new one will be fine this you see the new white plastic so it's gonna be fun getting that out here's a look at the brake booster tubing on the back of the motor it is so crispy it's hard as a rock I mean it's like hard brittle plastic so I was able to break off the tube headed out of here but just beyond the the lip right it's it's um just totally fused on there so i've been kind of tapping at it scraping at it with a knife and a chisel obviously i don't want to go too far too aggressive because then it's just gonna hit the metal so i finally got it to kind of break free i can't point at anything because i just blocked the camera shot but uh, i was able to just to, to kind of snap so i'm just going to peel it off all right, so I got the piece out. It, um, it's so brittle. So I think actually kind of tapping it lightly with a chisel actually made it uh, just snap because it's just like this brittle plastic. It's a rubber hose, but it's turned into plastic. So I'm gonna try that again on the other side. So there's the other hose. So basically what I'm doing is like taking this chisel and this plane and just kind of lightly tapping and um, feeling around to try to get it to break. That did it. Just lightly tapping that just allowed it to split open. Now I'm just going to pull it off. Damn it. To set the focus and then I turn the thing on. It doesn't want to focus. Bam. Look at this thing. Disgusting. We got it. Um, I'm using these ear, the single ear clamps, which I don't think I can get my tool down in there to do this. Uh, hose clamps is probably a better idea, but I'm going to try. Got the Nipix. Well, I'm here zoomed in to show you where I'm at. I got the new brake booster vacuum line hose on here. I wanted to do these single ear clamps. If I can show you this, this little single ear clamp. Problem is getting the tool in there to tighten this. Didn't want to do that. Found the little warm gear drive. One thing I will be able to get a single ear clamp on is this uh, little connector here. Coupling. Ah, you know what, before we do that, most important thing is a little bit of lubrication. I just got some uh, some motor oil, just a just a touch.
So we got two tools for this job. You're gonna need these little fuel line wrenches. Now what's cool about these is they have like a little extra lip that grabs um, grabs the other side of the nut or the other side of the, the hex nut. So right open-ended wrench is not gonna have that. So that'll help you not strip it out. So you're gonna need an 11 millimeter and that's gonna go on the brake line side of this, okay? And then this guy was recommended 14 millimeter crow's foot. So what's nice about this is it's really far down in here next to the valve cover. So having this, you know, I can get my wrench on there hopefully, or my extension, and be able to hold that to get it off. Uh, this is a Sunex tool, got it on Amazon, and this is a gear wrench. More paper towels. While you're working in here, the uh, air filter boxes make a nice storage <laughs> storage box for your tools. So this bottom one is a 17. 14 on the other one. Bunch of odd sizes for this job. Fuck. Got it. Sorry for the expletive. All right, got this one out. The lower on this top side line was like barely in there. Not barely in there. It is, I mean, minimal force. With a couple wrenches, Oop, just popped it off. Now to get some paper towels down there. So it don't get brake fluid everywhere. So we just got the lower line left. This by far is the hardest one. I took the um, spark plug cover off just to get a little more access to get another click on this wrench. I got this long handled gear wrench. So once you get this free, you can slide this over, which gave me great grip. It's at 17 on the lower one. Um, this was a pain in the ass, but basically you got to finagle this together, and I was able to just squeeze it together like this. Close my hand and pop it off. Getting that 11 on here was difficult because the other brake line's in the way, and there's obviously no room. Um, and there's not enough leverage on this little guy, you know? that's The long-handled stuff comes really useful, like this wrench is badass. Another gear wrench. Um, anyway, I uh, had to take my shirt off for this one. It's getting a little hot. I didn't really think about these being red. Mm. Really won't see them, but something to think about. Turner makes some blue ones. These are ECS. I don't know if anybody makes the stainless um, version of these in black. Here's a little comparison. You got the old lines and the new lines. This is the lower one, 17 to 11. You can see this matches up pretty good. This other one looks a touch bit longer, but it'll be fine. So on the ECS lines, this lower one, the OEM one is a uh, 17. This is a 16. I noticed my wrench was pretty loose uh, going on there. So definitely want to double check that before you start cranking down on stuff, right? That's how you strip things. Good and tight. Done. That personally went very easy for me. Relatively easy. Three out of ten difficulty scale. So the only thing I don't really like is this ECS line is like basically all hardware and then the soft, it's a stainless line, hard line, but you just get this little bit and just the way the the line is, it's kind of like just got this kink to it. I don't know, it just doesn't like look good. I'm sure it's fine, but it's like this one point of flexibility. Um, hopefully that's no big deal. The other thing I noticed uh, on this top line when I was tightening this down, I, I was starting to bend this line a little bit, so just be cognizant of that, of like how much torque you're putting through this. Um, it's not um, something you can really torque down too hard. I got these just, you know, snug, pretty, just hand tight, so once we bleed the brakes, get this thing 
some pressure in it. We'll obviously come back here to make sure we have no leaks, but we're done. So I was able to bend back that lower line just a little bit. Just with my hands, just kind of bend it so it's nice and straight. So no longer have that kink. Um, also, there's a little clip, over center clip back here that uh, one of the lines had popped out of. So make sure those the lines are popped into there, but that's the final look there. To wrap this video up with the brake upgrades, y'all need to get this ABS pump and brake line heat shield. Incredibly awesome that Kevin Anderson out on Facebook, I'll drop a link down below so you can get one yourself. I ended up going with the his first round, which was just that silver aluminum piece. And then later on, he was able to get one in black. I thought it looked a bit more stealth and fit the engine bay better. That's it for this video. Stay tuned. I'll have the stop tech trophies going on the car next. We'll bleed the brakes and also cycle the ABS pump through the BMW software I have. Cheers.